Thank you, Chairman, sir. I bring the greetings from uh, my city of Sangam Rahabad to all of my esteemed colleagues. I am going to speak on the topic primary total hypertoblasty in the displaced fracture neck of femur. Despite the immense work on the fracture neck of femur and the plenty of literature on the fracture neck of femur, I think management of uh, displaced fracture neck femur is still remains controversial and uncertain. There are a group of surgeons who go for internal fixation, that is the retaining of the natural head with the fixation. If it fails, they go for osteotomy and uh, even if uh, it is not uh, united, they go for the muscle pedicle and increase the vascularity and retain the head. The another group of surgeons who directly decapitate the head go for the hemiarthroplasty and the another emerging group of surgeons who directly go for the total hip replacement in the fracture neck femur of the primary replacement. So it is the surgeon's responsibility to choose the procedure and surgeon decides his procedure according to the, his experience and training and on the other side with the evidence-based orthopedics. So his procedure whether to fix it with the cannulated hip screw or DHS, whether to decapitate it with the ostium or uh, cemented bipolar or do the total hip with the cemented, uncemented and cementless. Then variety of uh, things he has to decide and this decision is either made by the evidence-based orthopedics or with the ex experience and training. But whatever the procedure we are choosing, we have to restore the restore quick and pain-free mobility and then in the remaining year of good function of this uh, uh, hip and the defer the secondary procedure due to failure of the primary fixations and minimum mortality and morbidity in the procedure. Coming to the internal fixation, the, it retains natural head and uh, it is a very simple procedure. We do the less surgical trauma and it allows early mobilization and lower risk of wound sepsis when we do the percutaneous screw fixation. But it has a downside also. It has a risk of non-union up to 40 percent, there is a risk of avascular necrosis and risk of subtracted fractures and sometimes the risk of reoperation because of the failure of these procedures, fixes and failure and non-union and avian. When we do hemiarthroplasty, it is the excellent solution for elderly frail patients. It's very low cost surgery and easy and quick to perform and there is uh, no complication of fixation as in the form of failure and avian. But it has its own complications. It has a high risk of deep infection in comparison to the internal fixation. It has risk of dislocation, sometimes periprostative fracture during the procedure or after the procedure. And there is a risk of loosening and subsidence and uh, risk of estabular wear and protrusion is there. The emerging total hyperthroplasty in primary fixation as in the fracture neck of femur, it's better with the immediate long-term results. There is a least pain and uh, maximum mobility in this procedure. There is low risk of free operation after the failure of primary procedure and there is a good clinical outcome and long-term survival. If we overcome the dislocation and uh, Osteolysis, this is excellent procedure, but these two complications are bound to happen. That is where the downside of total hip arthroplasty in primary fixations. Purpose of this study is to compare the mortality, morbidity and functional outcome of uh, th these procedures 
and to identify the risk factors of these procedures. We took 100 patients with the fracture neck of femur and uh, inclusion criteria were displaced fractures above 75 years of the age and treated with the internal fixation, hemiarthroplasty and total hepatoplasty. We did the clinical assessment, radiological and statistical evaluation. The type of implant used in the fixation was uh, calibrated hepatoscopy 35 and uh, dynamic in 2012. Austin were in 12 patients and cemented by pollen 23. And uh, cemented total hepatoplasty was uh, maximum in comparison to hybrid and cementless. The mean age was 83.1 percent, mean follow-up was 1.2. The mortality was more or less similar in all three procedures. 33 percent patient had pain in the internal fixation group and 27 percent in hemiarthroplasty group and 2 percent in the total hepatoplasty group. Pre-injury mobility has been found to influence the final outcome of these procedures, these fractures, and the painless mobility was uh, in the total hepatoplasty. It fared well compared to the other two groups. 33% patient had undergone revision surgery in the internal fixation group, and 24% uh, in hemiarthroplasty and 4.7 in total hepatoplasty group. The dislocation rate was a bit higher in the total hepatoplasty. And the final outcome was quite uh, poor in the hemiarthroplasty and the internal fixation group. Here are a few clinical examples. Impacted fracture treated with the connected hip screws, with the DHS. Failure of fixation revised with the total hepatoplasty. The elderly patient treated with the cemented bipolar. Another patient with the cemented bipolar. The osteoarthritis with the stress fracture treated with the cemented total hepatoplasty. The hybrid fixation for fracture femur and the cementless fixation in the younger patient for the fracture femur. The subsidence and loosening of the osteomer with the stem failure treated with the total hepatoplasty cemented and protusio and severe erosion then again revised with the total hepatoplasty. So in conclusion, there is no significant difference in the mortality in all three groups. Internal fixation has the highest revision rate. Internal fixation with the hemiarthroplasty has long-term poor outcomes. And total hepatoplasty is capable of achieving excellent result in both short and long terms. So we recommend the many other pre-designed prospective randomized trials to come out with the good conclusion with the multicentral trial and big cohort. There are a lot of uh, studies going on and there are trials going on. The FAITH trial and the HEALTH trial is the latest one and uh, they are coming out with their conclusion in 2016-2017. It is a very big cohort with the multicentral trial. I think we could get some guidelines according to them in these fractures and there are a lot of other studies going on in the world over. So the take home message is that total hepatoplasty should be seriously considered for the displacement, displaced subcapital fracture neck of femur in the physiologically active patients and in the fracture neck of femur with the estabular changes like osteoarthritis, rheumatoid, any other estabular diseases. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Katie, for the question answer session. We will be taking that in. Is Mr. Modified bipolar hepatoplasty in avian Indian girls. Outcome. Yeah, greeting from Pune. Now I'm talking to you today on a modified bipolar hip arthroplasty for the avian of the hip. As we all know, the surgical treatment for avian is a core decompression with or without graft in younger people. Osteotomy around the hip. Thank you osteotomy around the hip and arthroplasty and the various types of arthroplasty for the avian is total hip replacement, surface replacement, proxima metha and bipolar hip replacement. We all know that the total hip arthroplasty is a gold standard for avian but we should remember also that we are dealing with the young people and the young people have a lot of challenges like they are more active, they are more demanding they are more varied because of their overactivity. 
and they require early revision. And if you go through the literature, in 2006, there is a publication by Haynes May 2006 that the functional utility of THA drops to 80% at 10 years and 33% at 16 years, requiring a second surgery. And the survivorship of the revised THR is 54.8% at 10 years. Now, so keeping that in mind, what should be done to reduce away rate? And people have come out with ceramic on ceramic or ceramic on a poly, cross leaf poly or poly with high vitamin E. But at what cost? They are not very cheap and everybody can't do it. And how many can afford it? And definitely requires expertise to do it and has a very steep learning curve. And we all know that the major cause of failure or revision in TH is mostly at the acetabular level due to cup loosening or malpositioning. Now to take care of this, I am presenting the bipolar in a modification which I am going to tell you okay, how to reduce this rate. Now when we use a bipolar, we don't have to worry about the cup position, cup orientation or anti-version or retroversion, whatever. And here the acetabulum is conserved. We are not uh, doing a deep reaming of the acetabulum, though I will be showing what I do. And it can be done by general orthopedic surgeon as we are all are trained during a training early period that how to do hemiautoplasty. If you go through the literature, there are references for and against bipolar in AVN. I came across this reference in International Bipolar News in 1996 where there was a 15-year follow-up given by Batman. He used this processes for earlier for fracture neck femur, later for AVN, osteoarthritis and RA and he got good results in AVN Ficket grade 3. Another paper 12 to 18 year follow up and they also concluded that the bipolar is effective in delaying the need for THA for more than 10 years with figure 3. This is the last year article I came across in International Orthopedics. They did this study on steroid induced osteonecrosis. Here the survival rate is 96.8 percent at 10 years and 78.6 at 15 years. So they concluded that with strict surgical indications it may be a good option for treatment of AVN stage 3. Now this paper is negative. 7 to 18 years follow up, see the ground symptom rate is 42 percent. And if you compare the various groin pain as per this study, you find the range is right from 12 to 42 percent. Now what causes this groin pain? Mostly it has been seen that you see acetabular erosion or protrusion which is seen in 8 to 45 percent, migration of the cuff which lead to unpredictable pain relief. So possible reason which I feel that the pain and the erosion is due to a motion between the outer cup and acetabulum and non-concentric acetabulum and the particulate wear. So I am going to tell you what modification is done in bipolar replacement so that you can take care of all these problems. It is based on a principle which is given long time back by the Bateman that the acetabular flow retains a regenerative property which regenerates bone in the subchondral region if stimulation in the form of weight bearing is given through an accurately fitted cup. Here important is acetabulum flow is maintained, it can regenerate provided you put an accurately fitted cup. So what is the modification? It is a gentle superficial reaming of the acetabulum and insertion of a tight bipolar cup. So first described by Batman in 1996 which was published. Mind you, I am just talking of gentle superficial reaming, not a deep reaming. And this will lead to either minimum or no motion between the outer cup and acetabulum. So practically if you see the x-ray, it will show this as if it is a THR. And we are preserving the subchondral bone key if required for revision afterwards, the subchondral bone is maintained. And yes, now I will just give you a little clipping. This is uh, after the incision, you see the amount of cyanovitic material inside and the uh, loose tissue which has been removed and then the gentle reaming with the hand reamer till the last reamer is used. And the trial cup, if you see, a part of it is overhanging. It's a two-third large cup, two-third spherical. And it should be same as the last reamer used. And when you see this, there is a concentricity of the acetabulum 
even the articular cartilage is seen but there is no loose tissue inside preparation of the femur stem either you can use a press fit or uh, cemented depending on the choice depending on osteoporosis and a bone stock and this is the post operative x-ray look at the cup is so nicely fitted into the acetabulum and he had come to me with the bilateral avian and coat decompression had already been done before and then in the follow up after six months he was happy with the right hip he came for the left one which had become much worse then if you see this comparison on the right hip uh, x-ray in the AP view and the abduction view outer cup is practically not moving at all and all the movement is in the inner bearing and at six years is well maintained no erosion if you see carefully the acetabular margin is little scrosed as per the Batman's principle there is no erosion at all and he has been happy he came to me for follow up for DVT and I asked him to sit this is to show the range of motion present at the hip joint in our series we had 80 patients with 96 hips range of age 25 to 69 average follow up 4 to 12 years range is 4 to 12 and average is 9.5 we have used self-centering two-third cup in 60 hips and normal centric hemispherical in 36 hips overall result HS score from 39 to 90 which is quite acceptable groin pain only in four patients thigh pain almost nil initially some patient complained of thigh pain which I noticed after a period of time six months one year it disappeared and subsidence was seen in eight patients but not more than 5 mm and we had a cup migration also 2 mm which is also acceptable no dislocation on any of the case and I did revision in two patients for stem problem the cement had become loose and our survival rate at 12 years is 98 percent and no death in this group some cases this is the first case which I did a 55 year old man came to me with non-union and neck femur with AVN grade 4 acetabulum is also involved and those time we did not have a modular bipolar so monoblock bipolar was used and even after 15 years the cup is very well fixed into the acetabulum and if you see there is a, some bone formation in the outer corner of the acetabulum also and the acetabulum is still rose another gentleman I did this bipolar, he already had a AVN on the left side uh, and uh, protrusio. I did a modular one and after 5 years still the protrusio is seen but is symptomless. So he came for the right hip. And this was one year after the right hip was done. This arrow indicates that I have used a large cup and acetabular protrusio portion is not disturbed. So there is a gap between the outer margin of the cup and the acetabulum. And clinically when he came satisfied another gentleman 25 years he had come to me with a central fracture dislocation fixed the acetabulum and after two years came for the AVN grade 3 x-ray after one month five years clinical result this gentleman he was operated in Agra I was told about 20 years back and when he came to me with a deformed acetabulum looking at the x-ray anybody will say go for the reamed total hip but I did a bipolar and at 9.5 years the cup is well maintained there is sclerosis in the acetabulum and he is also quite happy this gentleman post alcoholic avian yeah post alcoholic avian grade 3 at 9 years though you find little virus in the stem but the cup is well maintained and the result he can perform his all normal duties he ride on a bicycle and climb stairs very well last patient I operated on him for HP nail right back in 1982 in 2001 he came with avian with figure grade 4 did this uncemented bipolar 8 year follow up 11 years abduction and neutral position showing the cup is still maintained in position not moving and is able to drive a car now surgical tips do a gentle reaming of the acetabulum no hard reaming no power reaming no subcontral reaming and large cup is to be used which should be concentric so that it can give a good fit no capsule closure because i feel if you close the capsule on a large cup there are chances of impingement and then it can give rise to pain and we also know 
that the posterior capsule contains a nerve and fibers for the acetabulum. So the pain factor is taken off. The stem, any type one can use. And whatever failure are seen in literature, they are related to the subcondral reaming and non-concentric cup. So advantage is less invasive. Subcondral bone is preserved for future revision and can be done by any orthopedic surgeon and some of my junior colleagues have already doing for the last few years. Thank you. Respected Chairperson, Sir and Colleagues. Fractured neck femur is a relatively common injury in adults. It is associated with substantial morbidity and mortality. 30% mortality of elderly patients die within one year of fracture and after one year patients seem to resume their age adjusted mortality rate. So that is about it. Some people were calling it as unsolved fracture because the challenge still remains to the orthopedic surgeon. And with life expectancy increasing with each decade, our society is becoming increasingly an active geriatric society with significant numbers of hospitalized nursing home patients with femoral neck fractures and their sequelae. Fractures are intracapsular and involve a constricted area with comparatively little cancellous bone and a periosteum that is thin or absent. So blood supply of the femoral head gets impaired or entirely lacking and this leads to osteonecrosis and later degenerative changes. So that is the medial supply, the medial circumflex femoral artery coming from posterior side. This is a specimen showing you the blood supply and you can see that if the fracture is there, all the supply coming from distal to femur will be cut off. So the evidence based management for the diagnosis, in an acutely painful hip, if the diagnosis of hip fracture is questionable, bone scanning and MRI have shown excellent sensitivity in identifying these injuries. In a study by Queen and McCarthy, they found that T1 weighted MRI images was 100% sensitive as compared to bone scan. And this is you can see an X-ray and the MRI which shows the fracture. <coughs> Coming to delay in operative treatment, the effect of delay of operative treatment of a patient, mortality are conflicting. <coughs> Many elderly patients have multiple medical problems and spending 12 to 24 hours in medical evaluation treatment before surgery is advantageous. However, if you do an excessive delay, it is not correct because a more than three days delay double the mortality rate within the first year after surgery. And if you delay it for two days, then the mortality was still more than compared with those who were fixed within two days. There is a habit of us that when a patient comes, we have to do something and we give traction. It has been found that the bug's traction that you are giving in the fresh fracture neck femur cases may give traction to the blood vessels and being about spasm, decreasing the blood supply in avian. So please don't give traction if you are planning to do osteosynthesis. In a similar way, giving anesthesia of any type to these people doesn't change your results. That is as far as anesthesia is concerned. Goals. The goal of treating hip fractures is to return patients to their pre-fracture level of function without long-term disability and avoiding medical complications. Koval found out the positive predictors of fracture independence and it was age younger than 85 years, three or four comorbidities, pre-fracture independence and ambulation with therapy on discharge. Fracture type is not a predictor of mortality or of ambulation ability. Now we all have a doubt whether we should give the patient early ambulation or wait till the fracture unites. And it has been found that small activities like the patient passing stools or walking full weight bearing or timing clears is as much forceful as he just doing non weight bearing ambulation. And so you should do a stable fixation and allow early ambulation. This is advantageous as it prevents pulmonary complications, venous thrombosis, pressure sores and generalized deconditioning also. Non-operative treatment of displaced hip fractures usually is reserved for patients 
who are non ambulatory before the fracture or who are experiencing only mild pain so always ask whether he was walking before the surgery because following surgery it is not expected that he may walk if he was not walking before and <coughs> no fracture fixation young patients in the young patients the trauma differs from elderly it is caused by high energy trauma and may be associated with multiple injuries with a high rate of osteonecrosis non union so the results in these patients depend on the extent of the injury amount of displacement the amount of comminution and what has been to the vascular supply what was the adequacy of reduction what was the adequacy of fixation even when non displaced there is no predilection that a fracture of femoral neck will attain an excellent result of these patients 10 to 15% develop complications over which surgeon has got no control and early anatomical reduction compression of the fracture and rigid internal fixation are used to promote union but surgeon cannot control osteonecrosis so we all have been taught for ages why do we get non union and we know that it is intracapsular bathing in synovial fluid no cambium layer in the periosteum layer and angiogenic inhibiting factors of the synovial fluid are all factors which prevent union and we have to remember the blood supply as told one has found that if you go for open reduction the rate of non union can be 11.2% and close reduction leads to only 4.7 non union but displaced fractures that require reduction had a much higher rate of non union than those which were not displaced osteonecrosis correlates with the extent of initial trauma and the displacement of the fracture there some questions concerning the tamponade effect it has been found that in the younger patients you should open the capsule and in the older people you are anyway doing a change in them Now the money it has told that if the fracture is initially displaced, then they had a higher osteonecrosis rate compared to non-displaced fractures. They found a non-union rate osteonecrosis rate of 23 percent. Now if this is a fracture, it is in position impacted, so better don't go for any reduction. Jain et al has found that osteonecrosis in 26 percent of patients treated late after 12 hours compared with patients treated early. and radiological evidence of osteonecrosis does not always indicate a poor functional result and the late effects of osteonecrosis may take many years to develop so the prognosis depends on a vascular necrosis non union osteoarthritis and deformity depending on the displacement so you can see here with these fixations non union was evident on the first day now should we go for hip aspiration lot of studies saying young you have to go for it see here a cadaveric sample how the hematoma is full there pressing on the middle circumflex femoral artery and so you have to go for a capsulotomy even if you get a close reduction and this is how it is advocated under image intensifier by following close reduction also you can open the anterior capsule so that there is no pressure on the anterior vessels inside the capsule coming to the method of fixation the use of a single large compression hip screw for fixation of femoral neck fractures was shown to be resulting in lower rates of union in intracapsular fracture neck of femur while a hip compression screw with side plate is indicated in most of the cases usually with the addition of a supplemental anti rotation screw a short barrel and possibly a lateral buttress plate if the fracture extends into the lateral cortex or is basal adequacy of reduction is a must because it gives us good results and this is how you go for the gardens alignment index it is a good predictor of results and the lower left sign also if you see in the image intensifier shows you whether your reduction was acceptable or not sir post operative bone scans are important because if you do them after 2 weeks of operating time they can determine healing course in <coughs> fractures like uneventful healing hardware failure non union osteonecrosis and boring at all showed that decreased uptake noted on a bone scan one to three weeks post operatively and two months post operatively was indicative of eventual loss of reduction or segmental collapse in 50% of the patients whereas normal or increased uptake correlated with uncomplicated healing so this is a new thing that you can go for bone scans within the first three weeks and two months to know whether your fracture will unite or not and that is the message of this lecture the time is less so i'll end here thank you thank you very much dr agarwal i have a request dr dc shivasta to this talk Neglected fracture, non-union neck fever, treated by Velga Sastor, and fibrogram with fixation by DHS and double angle break.
respected chairman sir in the last two lectures the people talked about the replacement now i am talking about the reconstruction around the fracture neck femur is a challenge and this fracture is common with the non union and there are various managements and results vary with the patients to patient and surgeons to surgeons skill with different dif different opinion available with different claims of results even in the undisplaced fractures no assurance of the excellent results but the goal of the treatment is the union by mechanics of the hip should be restored and normal function and vascular supply should be restored to the extent the avian should not take place the biomechanics means the antiversion neck fracture sap neck sap angle limb length offset center of rotation of the head of the femur should simulate to the normal side and there should be the adequate muscle strength the biomechanics of the get result fixation and inadequate vascular supply the issue to be addressed in the neglected non union are the, the absorption of the neck leading to the shortening varus has to be addressed shortening of the limb has to be addressed bone gap should be addressed saving forces should be converted into compression forces a restoration of the offset of the hip restoration of the center of the rotation of the head and to avoid avian these are the factors you have to look into the as far as the we go there are the uh, we have made certain simple techniques with certain principle changes and once we get the reduction this is case two months old after getting the reduction the see we pass the two uh, wires parallel why we pass the two wires that uh, while we are reaming the uh, first wire to put the screw the head should not be rotated this rotation leads to the damage to the ligamentum teres vessel this is very important second issue which we have to address in this case is while we are going for the osteotomy in these cases the osteotomy angle is important how we will de determine it on the table this is very important and we have devised a simple technique to find out the osteotomy to decide it on the per operative just you put just you say it that the while you are doing osteotomy you put the plate like this it is 135 degree plate if you rotate it upward this makes an a 90 degree i of angle with the shaft if the next shaft angle is in the varus what happens this happens now you can calculate the angle that you see that the, it is 20 degree now you require 20 degree of the osteotomy in this case this is easy way of calculating the per operatively the osteotomy angle by uh, for getting 135 degree and uh, uh, next shaft angle for this uh, you can use another formula here that the base of the osteotomy has to be calculated to get that angle that is the base of the osteotomy is equal to tan alpha into the weight of the femur then you have to use the logarithm table that should be in ot and immediately you can find out the base what what amount of the wedge you have to take out after doing all these things you would go for the osteotomy at the specific side which you decide and after getting the osteotomy done you put the bar barrel rotate it to the side parallelly and then fix it after fixing the osteotomy uh, plate to the shaft what you do then you release the traction while you tighten the central screw that gives the rigid compression at the site of the fracture the importance of fibula will not go in the detail of that you already know and we have got also in a study about the vascular versus non vascular fibula i will skip also that that has been done with the help of the pathology department and uh, this is the only inference we have done that the free vascular fibular graph is questionable because the anatomical and physiological structure of the free vascular graft of the fibula is not adequate to supply nutrition to its cortical cellular elements for the survival based on the one artery and one vein this is the ultimate what we have drawn by our studies 
We have made an Allahabad hibiscope to modify the Harris score. Here are the few cases. This is a two months old case. We fixed it after a month, this post operatively. Then, after two months, this is another case. We fixed it. We put the two screws in that, and this ultimately united. This is another third case about half an year old. We reduced, fixed it and put the graft, although the next neck uh, length was not that much, although we maintained the height of the limb by the osteotomy. In which the screw was reversed, though we corrected it later on, there was no need to have sufficient union has taken place already. This is another case in which we did, did the fixation. This was the case which was operated in Bombay. We came to me about a year after the operation. We took out the screw and then we reduced it, fixed it. And after about two months. This is very interesting case. I got it from Varanasi. It was operated. She was 45 years old lady. Operated in Varanasi about one and a half year back. This was the situation. And uh, she had also the soft fracture which was also in delayed union. And we decided to go ahead with a long DHS uh, angular plate. And you see what happened. We fix this. We slide the plate to lower down to put the lower fixations here and ultimately it united. This is another case we operated upon, although there is some virus in the neck, ultimately the results are reasonably good in this case. The results we operated about 32 cases and the results are excellent in 12 patients, good in 8 patients and poor in 12 patients. In two of the, our cases, there was a failure, the back out of the screw because of the infection and ultimately we took, took out the whole device and converted it by THR model for the modular replacement. To conclude this, that all the cases united except two, all got painless joint, functional outcome was good, about 70 to 100 percent, no even encountered in the follow-up and no other combination or method can meet the biomechanical demands of this fracture, non-union, as this one. Thank you. Respected Chairman, sir, and friends, uh, I will be in this talk after listening to my esteemed colleagues. I will be commenting something on what they have told you, and maybe I will be busting some myths about how to treat this older fraction of femur. As has been told by others, there is a very high rate of non union when we traditionally <coughs> treat fraction of femur. And a uh, meta-analysis also said that up to 26% of these cases go into non-union. In our country, we have a unique group of patients who require salvage because they come for the first time very late to the surgeon. There are various methods of classifying these old fractures. I won't go into details of it. But I will be talking a bit about what causes non-union. Of course, there is no callus formation. We have to remember that this is a cancellous bone. Cancellous bone does not heal by callus formation. It heals by creeping substitution. Creeping substitution is by what we call as a late medullary callus. The late medullary callus response does not die down as the external callus response does in a few months' time, making a non-union of a long bone. So whatever time you decide to fix it, the late medullary callus 
is there to help you. That response is there. Secondly, if you are operating, if you have operated any oil case of fracture neck of fever, particularly for hemiarthroplasty, when you have removed the head, you must have found that there is absolutely no intervening tissue between the two fractures. Unlike other long bone non-unions, there is no fibrous tissue there. There is nothing, just there is some lysis of the bone. But it is a bone interface to the bone interface, maybe with a gap. But you don't have to address any soft tissue intervening the fracture fragments. Factors that affect the salvage in fractures of the neck of femur, one is the configuration of the fracture, delay in presentation, how much delayed it is, footprints of the previous implants, because a lot of these patients come with implants already in situ which have failed. Neck of the, le uh, the length of the neck available, sometimes we have very little neck and sometimes we even have infection. Powell was the person who had talked about the biomechanics for the very first time, biomechanics of the hip and how vertical fracture is more predisposed to non-union and we will be taking this into account when we decide how to treat these fractures. Configuration of the fracture, a posterior combination makes it very unstable. Then footprints of the previous implants, variety of implants are there. They may be causing a large defect in the head, may even be going down to the acetabulum and damaging the acetabulum where probably the salvage is not at all possible. The length of the neck available. Ours is one country where uniquely we may get these patients, young patient, about 13 year old, where there's absolutely no neck. The small child had been walking on this fracture since two years. The whole neck has got resolved. What to do in such cases? What we have, the procedures available, open or close reduction and internal fixation. In cases of already fixed failed implant, a redo, variety of bone graftings, osteotomies or a combination of two. This is one of the example, a uh, patient coming delayed to and when uh, open reduction was done, we found that the fracture line was horizontal and hence there was no need to do anything else and ultimately it went into union. Even two and a half months after the fracture he presented late, it went into union because the basic primary, the callus, late medullary callus response is there and it will bring about union if you have a proper biomechanics at the fracture site. Another case where a posterior combination coming late, again fixed, found that the fracture lies were horizontal, use of DHS provided much more stability in unstable cases like this instead of cannulated, multiple cannulated screw and this leads to uh, early union in such cases, failed fixation, lot of space taken up by this implant. What to do in such a case? Again, uh, open reduction after the implant was removed and found that the fracture line here is quite horizontal. There is no need of osteotomy. Just simple open reduction and internal fixation without any grafting. A cortical graft does not provide much more than a mechanical mechanical strength to the fixation and where implant here is adequately doing it and see it has gone into union. Another case, uh, young children, very young children, even when they come late, they have a good potential for healing. They heal well, you don't require much. But what about these cases where there is no neck at all? Here we are using fibular grafts. Two fibular grafts to reconstruct the head with a small size DHS that is available in our country as periodic DHS. This, there is a opposite forces with the DHS compressing the head against the shaft uh, where the trapped fibular grafts get compressed against the two fragments and it goes into union. We have done just four cases, not many, but then we had nothing better to offer and all of them have healed and they are doing well. Now coming to the topic proper, a uh, valgus osteotomy here, a valgus osteotomy to convert the vertical fracture into the horizontal fracture is what everyone has been doing. But then when we do this valgus osteotomy and fix it with a double angle plate, we don't know what are the strength of this double angle. The bending of the plate, has it, has it damaged the strength? What will happen to the upper end of the hip, which has upper end of the femur, which has gone into valgus? Whether it will accept a total hip implant when one, some of these cases will be requiring. 
these are some of the cases where double angle plate has been fixed though initially the result may be good but is the plate the implant strong enough and what will happen to this valgus angle at the upper end will it accept the total hip implant if required this is what we have been doing uh, uh, implant which is removed in case there was an implant uh, dhs maybe of a smaller size which occupies a space just beneath or away from the cavity in the head and then an osteotomy something like long time back what Dixon had described but made much more simpler so that only a small wedge of bone was removed and instead of doing a valgus we are just repositioning the whole thing rotating it like a like a six sided hexagonal screw so that there was not much of valgus angle here but at the same time the fracture would become horizontal and when we compared it with templates a simple valgus osteotomy a template applied here shows that it's very difficult to fit in a total hip implant where when we do this sort of osteotomy with a small very small piece of bone removed then it is easier to fit a, a femoral implant of total hip replacement here is one of the example a definite non union of fracture neck of femur fixed after osteotomy went in for a good healing and this is a function of this patient. Another case, initially neglected, went into Frank non union, uh, osteotomy was done. You can see that the trochanter and the shaft are more or less in the same line. So there is not excessive valgus here, only the fracture line has become horizontal and it has gone into union, implant removed, a good function. Another case, uh, missed fracture neck of femur where even the shaft femur is a non union. Two plates were applied because otherwise we would have to uh, make a large incision and proper fitting DHS plates were not available and uh, both the fractures went into union. Uh, interesting case, a young person, 17 year, 18 year old who was a commando, who was undergoing commando training, had a fracture neck of femur fixed, was infected. We removed the implant and we had put in uh, uh, cement, cement, interim, uh, antibiotic loaded cement spacer into it and once the fracture, once the infection healed, we had done an osteotomy and fixed it with a DHS in a lower quadrant because here there was a big cavity, went into union, I am sorry about the quality of x-ray but this is better, the implant was removed, you see there are some subtle signs of a vascular necrosis here but looked at the function this person has gone back to his commando training and is now a full-fledged commando another case uh, uh, old case with uh, typical shepherd crook deformity with an absolutely vertical fracture what are you going to do here simply a valgus osteotomy the fracture line has become horizontal and it is going into union a uh, 11 year old child 12 year old child with a non-union neck of femur of four years standing, never been able to walk without a crutch. What could we offer to her? Again, an osteotomy with a DHS fixation. Look how beautifully, even after four years, without any grafting, without going in for inter, uh, open reduction, how beautifully the fracture has healed. We have been doing this since last 15 years. We have done a lot many cases of 160 cases just, yeah, yeah. I will be finishing it very fast. We have got excellent heresive scores. There were a few cases which went into non-union like this, but because of the horizontal fracture line, the fracture was stable. Even after five years, the patient did not want uh, anything to be done because in spite of non-union, she was walking well. Another case uh, which had gone into avascular necrosis and then a total hip replacement was done, it was easy, no difficulty. Another case, again, an osteotomy, but a total hip replacement did not pose much of a difficulty. To summarize, it is a simple, easy to do, easy to learn procedure. Uses implants with proven track record that we have already using. No extra alternary, we are familiar with the implants. Consistently good results. No extra morbidity of the bone, gra bone graft site. And even the complications like AVN are easy to manage. Thank you. I am Dr. Bose here. My question to all the faculties, if you have got a fractured neck femur, 
old, which have a shallowed capitals, uh, the head. It doesn't have a neck. So how could you reconstruct the head? If you do not have the neck, all the neck have been observed, you're having a just uh, shell of bone in your head, and the neck is more or less observed. Can I answer that, Mr. Chairman, sir? Can I answer that? Because I have uh, uh, presented a few cases here. I, if I may be permitted to uh, use the slide again. No, I'm, I'm afraid. OK. OK. So uh, see, there's variety of ways of reconstructing the neck that has been described in literature. What I have shown here, four cases that we had done where there was absolutely no neck. The head was shallow, like a cup. We had used DHS with a 16 millimeter threaded portion. We had used it to hold the head somehow. And then we had used two fibular graft struts, one above and one below, with the DHS plate against this fibular grafts here. And as we tightened the centering, the compression screw, DHS, as the head came, the fibular grafts were impacted well into it. And these were young patients. We did in all these patients, we had put in a hip spiker that I failed to mention. 13, 14, 15 year old. So we were not sure it was a new technique, but all of them healed well. And they started walking full weight bearing. Respected sir, uh, the comment you made on my surgery that the fibula migrated into the joint, it was my technical fault of surgery, my skill failure, simple. Secondly, as far as my observation is concerned, I am doing surgery, I am quite junior to you for last 20-25 years, that to the best of my knowledge, and the system, I have also practiced number of surgeries whatsoever are available for the neck fracture. My experience is it is uh, one of the best procedure and it is the best for me, may not be for you. Sir, as far as uh, the amount of valgus that is permissible in the region of neck, the neck shaft angle, particularly between the intertrochanteric line and the shaft, if it goes into excessive valgus, it causes a vascular necrosis. So it's a well-known fact. Uh, what I humbly would like back to say that what we were doing, we were cutting the bone beneath this area of trochanter, beneath the uh, hunter's circle of vessels. So this is not going to produce any stress on the intracapsular vessels because we are going away. However, we did have a few cases of avascular necrosis and uh, that is almost equivalent to the uh, amount of avascular necrosis that we get in fresh cases. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, my concern is very simple. We are quoting a 
15 to 30 percent non-union. We are quoting 35 percent non-union AVN. And we are still quoting for the Western literature. Why the aesthetics are not coming from India? I'm surprised. If, uh, 55 years, 65 years, 66 years, not a single medical college is keeping their records. I'm, I'm very feeling very sorry. Maybe the failed, you say failed interfection. You don't know how, to, what type of interfection has been done. <coughs> What's that idea? Everybody is doing, concentrating, the minimizing sort of fixation that is bound to fail. What about the infection? We are operating in the places where the operation should not be done at all. Who can deny that? Who can prevent that? Then only we can come to the conclusion. Sorry, sir. Okay. I think Dr. Gaur has made a very important point. It was so fascinating to listen to people like Dr. Alok Agarwal, Dr. Sivarti, Some of the most fascinating thing which I saw was that even after a hip joint replacement, the patients were able to squat and sit cross legged Have we written all this? I think we do so much of work and we don't present it in the form of a journal, you know, Roman journal, Indian journal of orthopedics, or so many other journals that are available. All quotations were of foreigners or foreign articles. I mean, this is what has been addressed as intellectual colonialism. We still compare our data with them. We should be able to present our data to the world. We are one-fifth of the world population, sir. And you have learned one-fifth of clinical material in your hands. And we have that clinical material which has all the spectrum, the new, middle, neglected, and natural course. Uh, it was really fascinating that I could see the osteosynthesis, the replacement of steroidy, bone grafting, free fibula, that would be very long I do appreciate what has been done by the various speakers. I would still request again that we should make an attempt to channelize these data into suitable publication. But the publication has to be channeled in a suitable fashion so that you understood by the scientific community. Thank you very much, sir. Because the next year.